Today's video centers on the best known icon of England, and if you've been to London, you must know who I'm referring to. Known for their red jackets, huge black furry hats, and unsmiling faces, these men are none other than the Queen's Guards in London. Now everyone would kill to be the Queen's Royal Guard, but have you ever stopped to think that there's more to it than just standing around like a mannequin? Yes, these men are subjected to strict rules and regulations that some people might just consider as absurd. From having to remain smile-proof to posing for gangster-style photographs on the seat of royalty, here are 20 secrets the Royal Guards don't want you to know. Number 20. Buckingham's Poker Face Guards The men who stand guard outside Buckingham Palace and certain other royal palaces are, in fact, some of the best trained soldiers. They are indeed among the best known icons of Britain, and if you've ever been to London, you've probably seen them. They are the soldiers in bright red jackets or shining helmets who stand outside Buckingham Palace or Whitehall. They are men who can stand absolutely still even when tourists tell them jokes, touch them, push them, or try to make them move. What's more is that they look identical and march like robots. But who are these soldiers? Perhaps they are an army of clones or actors? Or are they real soldiers? Some people are surprised to learn that they are real soldiers, and the guns that they carry are very real too. The guns are not just for show, they are loaded. The truth about these soldiers is that they train themselves to remain smile-proof so they don't lose their salary. If a superior notices a guard stretching his lips in a smile, the guard will face a fine of up to a week's pay. In most cases, the overly cheerful guard should be ready to leave with about $260. That aside, it is totally unavoidable to let out a burst of laughter from time to time. As stated by one of the guards, some people are just too funny to ignore. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. This takes us to today's strange topic. Did you know that the royal guards have huge heads, which is why they have to wear such big hats? One royal guard was reported seen at a salon in mid-March, and this photo so happened to be caught on CCTV when the soldier had to take off his hat to get a haircut. Surprisingly, his shoulders carried an 18-inch head similar to the bearskin hat. That's pretty much the best reason to be the queen's guard. I mean, no one would even notice. Hard to believe, isn't it? Some of the soldiers standing at the palace might just be hiding a mountain under their hats. Let us know your opinion about this in the comment section with the hashtag strange topic. That being said, let's continue. Number 19. The Queen's Guards Hate Hot Weather It is understandable enough that no one likes hot weather, but some people would give any chance to try out that new swim trunks or bikini during summer. But what if we had to consider the fact that thick wool trousers, a snug jacket, and to top it off, a hat with bare fur, the blazing sun, and no opportunity to wipe up that hat dripping sweat are enough to make a man run mad. That's right, the Queen's Guards indeed do not find the hot days amusing. This happens because, on the hottest day of the year in London, the Queen's Guards are quick marching into 100 degree heat. Every one of them is hoping especially not to faint. All soldiers are prone to fainting in the heat, even the US Marines. In fact, it's such a problem that the British Army is funding research on how to prevent it. So how do these soldiers prepare? One guard said it's essential to drink lots of water, have a good breakfast, and wiggle your toes. It keeps the blood flowing and it doesn't show. And even if they do have to faint, they are to do it according to protocol. Imagine it's in the middle of the summer and you're wearing heavy wool, from head to toes. Naturally, even the most experienced people cannot cope with such conditions. As soon as a guard feels like fainting, he is to remain at attention, keeping his position. The guard must fall in a manner they refer to as faint to attention, which is why you won't see a guard on the floor in a crumpled up position. So this is why you're able to find those images with them lying face down somewhere. Number 18. The British Army Recruit Battery Test Since the Guard is basically a military organization, candidates have to pass the BIRB, the British Army Recruit Battery Test. 
The barb tests one's basic logic and smarts to be able to qualify to be the Queen's Guard. What's the test like? It's a half an hour long computer-based test that checks your analytical and logical skills. It also tests how well a recruit can adapt to his environment as time goes on. Though passing the test does not guarantee your whole entrance, there are still more conditions to be satisfied, like the height requirement, which states that you have to be at most 6 feet tall and at least 5 foot 10 inches. You will also need to remain calm under pressure as you are expected to work through the questions at a quick pace. Your final score will be based on both your performance and accuracy in the test and how fast you answered the questions. In some cases, a few guards had gotten their way by cheating through this test. And as funny as it may be, any new recruit could easily pass the test without cheating. Most times, they're asked to identify a mugshot of a prominent royal and to answer questions such as, is it ever okay to read a book while guarding the gate to the queen's private quarters? The obvious answer is no. But if you're not up to the height requirements, then just throw that idea of signing up into your page of dreams that can never come true. Number 17. The Ring Around System this is just simply a system operated at Buckingham Palace to prevent officers from being caught by their supervisors snoozing on night duty. There are two outside posts to protect the garden area outside the Queen's bedroom. Officers on relief took turns to keep watch while officers on armed posts would sleep. According to Page, it was natural for them to go to sleep on night duty. And if a senior officer was coming into the garden, He would contact the control room to ring other posts. Everyone then wakes up until the governor did his checks and had a little chat before leaving them. And just like that, they'd be back to sleep before you can say Buckingham Palace. Number 16. Royal Family's Guard Salary Working for the royal family sounds like a job of anyone's dreams. After all, who wouldn't want to hang out with people such as Kate Middleton, Meghan Markley, and of course, the Queen on a regular basis and get paid for it as well? Well, it turns out, working for the world's most famous family isn't always so easy. It's not as if you can go to work for the day, then hang out with your friends, telling them all the behind the scenes stories that went on at the palace. In addition to confidentiality, there's also a long list of other rules that royal employees are made to follow. For one, the Queen's bodyguards have a code name that they must use for her in order to protect her privacy. Being tasked with protecting some of the most famous, sought after people in the entire world is a demanding job. With the millions of people that line up to get a glimpse of the royals or possibly hoping to be lucky enough to even score a handshake, bodyguards must be on full alert at all times. So this brings us to the question of exactly how much they earn. Being associated with the royal family, we might think that their staff is exceptionally well compensated. However, this necessarily isn't the case, but in the case of a royal bodyguard, they are one of the highest paid royal employees, taking home with them a sum of £100,000 which comes after winning a pay dispute. Number 15. Changing of the Guard at Buckingham Palace Changing the guard at Buckingham Palace is the ceremony where the Queen's Guard hands over responsibility for protecting Buckingham Palace and St. James Palace to a new guard. This comes with specific dates in June, July, and August. Remember to always check the confirmed dates and times for changing the guard as schedules can change, sometimes at short notice. Following a march by a detachment of the old guard, with musical support from St. James's Palace and the new guard led by a regimental band from Wellington Barracks, the ceremony on the fourth court of Buckingham Palace starts at 11 and lasts for approximately 45 minutes. The Queen's Guard is usually provided by one of the five regiments of foot guards from the household division, instantly recognizable in their famous bearskin caps and red tunics. Musical support is provided by a regimental band or corps of drums, with pipers occasionally taking part in the ceremony. And surprisingly, watching the changing of the guard is free of charge, and no tickets are required. During the changing of the guard ceremony, police officers are always present to ensure a safe, smooth event. But if you are coming to watch, please take care of your personal possessions at all times. Like many crowded places, pickpockets have been known to operate in this area. Number 14. The story behind those bearskins caps. 
Although not worn by the Yeoman Warders, the fuzzy bearskin caps are an iconic feature of the Royal Guard's uniform. The origin of these seemingly excessive helmets dates back to the 18th century. At the time, the gunner in British and French armies wore these enormous bearskin caps to make them appear taller. This was believed to intimidate their opponents. French Emperor Napoleon dressed his Imperial Guards in similar hats while he was in power in the early 19th century. During the greatest battle of Waterloo, as the British defeated Napoleon's army, they collected the bearskin caps from the corpses of Napoleon's men and brought them home to, as trophies. The hats started out made from real bear fur, and even though, at some point, the monarchs tried switching to synthetic, the trend just wouldn't stick around, so everybody went back to the real thing. Curiously, these caps are secured under the lip of the guards by a curb chain, as opposed to under the chin. This is to protect the guard's neck in combat. The hat is so heavy that if it was tied beneath the chin and the guard was shot during an attack, causing the hat to drop backward, the guard's neck could snap in the process. The bearskin cap is said to get its name from the fact that inside is a cap that fits snug to the head of the wearer. Number 13. The Reason Behind Wearing Black Pants have you ever wondered if members of the Queen's Guard take bathroom breaks? Well, the answer is no, at least not during their two-hour shifts on duty. They're not permitted to leave their posts, and not even to go to the bathroom, and you can see where we're going with this. Suppose they really must go or cannot make it to the bathroom on time. In that case, guardsmen are instructed to relieve themselves in their uniform, which is why they chose to wear the dark-colored thick woolen pants. If an accident should occur, it should sufficiently hide any embarrassment. You may think that holding it in for two hours is no big deal, but these guys have to drink a lot of water on hot days to prevent themselves from getting dehydrated. In fact, according to a Reddit user, one guard was amid a ceremony and he couldn't hold it any longer. Unfortunately, he happened to be on the front row and had left a huge noticeable puddle where he was and some of the crowd noticed and started laughing. Number 12. They get bored. Yes, they get bored. Standing still for that long carries a severe health risk, and standing there for hours on end does get tedious, especially when they're not meeting royals or celebrities. The guardsmen's work can get pretty dull at times. Standing for hours and hours without really doing anything and mostly unable to move becomes boring at some point, but they find ways of occupying themselves while on duty. They might play songs in their heads or even play entire movies from start to finish to entertain themselves. They also photobomb tourists while remaining professional or just observing. People watch them so they shouldn't watch people as well? Some people think the guards aren't allowed to move at all, but that's not true. In fact, moving is pretty much mandatory. The only movements they're allowed during the regular shift are to turn to the left, march about 10 paces, and turn around, and go back to standing still. It's best to do these every 10 minutes to stop themselves from fainting from the blood that gets trapped in their legs and reduce the risk of passing out. Number 11. Their weapons are usually not loaded. These guardsmen might look a bit intimidating, with their weapons always at hand. But according to former members of the guard, these weapons usually won't be loaded because they are in ceremonial duties. But if security changes, so do the arming of these guards, and if tourists become a threat, police officers will step in quickly to handle the situation, so they wouldn't need these weapons to defend themselves. However, if there's a high threat level of a possible attack, they will indeed carry live rounds. Their weapons may not be loaded at all times, but they still have a sharp bayonet at the end that tends to upset people when they get stabbed with it. But just to be on the safe side, according to rule number one of gun safety, all guns are loaded. It doesn't matter if they are actually loaded or not, but everyone should still treat them like it is. Number 10. Reacting while on duty? The Queen's Guard comprises of various soldiers tasked with guarding the residences of the Queen and by extension, the Queen herself. Consisting of soldiers mostly handpicked from five elite regiments within the British Army, the Queen's Guards are internationally renowned for their stoic dedication to duty. However, contrary to popular belief, these soldiers are permitted to move and do so regularly, even when just on guard duty and not on parade, and in certain circumstances, do react to hecklers or the like. That said, member of the Queen's Guard will rarely 
rarely openly react to tourists taking photos or telling them jokes to try and make them laugh and are, in fact, specifically instructed to ignore stuff like this. However, suppose a particular group of tourists is being incredibly annoying. In that case, the guard may make their best effort to ruin a picture or the like. For instance, by suddenly turning and marching right when the tourists are all posing for a photograph with the guard. In one instance we came across, a guardsman noted he just continued to march while such tourists were around, passive aggressively getting them back for their disrespect, somewhat akin to the Seinfeld soup Nazi. No picture for you. Number 9. Make way for the Queen's Guard. It's not a Disney parade, they're real soldiers doing their job. When a regiment is marching, do you really expect that each of them down the line, using some sort of hive mind, will know to make a diversion because some damned fool couldn't simply stay out of the way? Make way for the Queen's Guard, because this is their post to patrol. This is their space and they are trained to protect it and the Queen and ultimately the palace or castle they are on duty at. This does not mean going around the public but walking through the public if they get in their way. Some members of the public think it is a joke, but all guardsmen are highly trained elite infantrymen and professional soldiers, and it is not a joke to them. There is also a drill movement called On Guard in which, with a bayonet fixed, the guardsmen can challenge the member of public by shouting on the guard and pointing their rifle at the person not taking notice. And if they do not listen to the guardsmen making the challenge, they could be arrested, as there are usually lots of police around to support them. Similarly, if you block their movements, they are allowed to shout. Out, make way for the Queen's Guard, and if you get in their face or if they have to shout too many times, they'll knock you out, then stoically resume their post. Number 8. The Queen Talks to Them Being a member of the Queen's Guard, you might get to meet a lot of important people. We're not just talking about the royal family, but also the abundance of respectable people from around the globe who travel to Britain to meet the royal family. Presidents, prime ministers, and even celebrities, guardsmen get to meet the, all of them. While some of them have professed that this novelty eventually wears off, apparently meeting Her Majesty the Queen herself never gets old, especially if you get to converse with her. One former guardsman had said that when he was on guard at Windsor Castle, the Queen came up to him and asked him some questions. He also claimed that she's really lovely. This may surprise some, but others have also said the Queen has a great sense of humor. Number 7. Queen's guards are in red in some videos, grey in others. We've probably noticed that while the Queen's guards wear bright red jackets most of the time, sometimes you can see them in very long grey coats. Is it a difference in rank? Does it depend on whether the Queen is present? Or what is it that changes their uniform's color? Well, some people say it depends on the Queen's mood, like wearing the red coat when she's in a good mood, and grey when she's in a bad mood. But the truth behind this is that the Queen's guards wear the red jackets in spring and summer, while the long grey coats are worn during fall and winter. The grey coats are longer and warm enough to allow the soldiers to stay still for a while, at the same time protecting them from the rain and other harsh weather. Number 6. Smuggling Prince Andrew's Lady Friends Need I mention, Paige was a trusted officer in the Metropolitan Police's Royalty Protection Command. He had worked for 10 years but was also secretly running an elaborate Ponzi scheme from inside Buckingham Palace to fund a lifestyle of hard drinking and degenerate gambling. His decades of misbehavior include the crazy confessions about the antic of a wild conspiracy within the Queen's guards. One of them was smuggling Prince Andrew's lady friends into and out of the palace. Apparently, the Queen's guards were not the only ones who abused their positions, as members of the royal household also partook in this tradition. During Page's trial, he mentioned that when Prince Andrew's mum was away, he would often have lady friends come to visit him. According to him, they rarely had to sign in the gate book when entering the palace grounds and direct contravention of the accepted protocol. In addition, royalty officers would be told on occasion to drive these lady friends home when that was a clear dereliction of their duties. The allegations chimed with a term of tabloid stories about Prince Andrew's disposition after separating from Sarah Ferguson in 1992. That aside, Randy Andy and Andy's Candy were just some of the headlines that followed him around the globe. Number 5. Works Attached to Being a Royal Guard those in central London know the nightmare and expense of parking there, but royal protection officers always had a way to get around it. How, you ask? 
Well, the royal household staff, diplomats, and other dignitaries who are unable to park at nearby Buckingham Palace can do so at St. James's Palace on the Mall. And it so happened that at Page's trial, one constable revealed that for years there was an unwritten rule for officers to also raise the barrier for wives, friends, and family members who fancied a spot of shopping, maybe followed by a West End show. Number 4. They Don't Just Protect Buckingham Palace while we might generally associate these red tunic-clad guards with Buckingham Palace, they actually also protect other royal landmarks too. In fact, the Foot Guard Regiment has the role of the primary garrison for the capital, the sovereign's military security, and ceremonial duties in London. Foot Guard! The duty of the Queen's Guard is to protect all the residences of the British monarch, so while they're primarily associated with Buckingham Palace and central London, they can also be seen at Windsor Castle, St. James's Palace, or the Tower of London. You'll also see foot guards at Wellington Barracks, as well as the Royal Artillery Barracks, Woolwick. There are no sentries guarding Edinburgh Castle, except for when a royal visit occurs. However, this is likely to be one of the foot guards. In Scotland's capital, Edinburgh, the Queen's Guard can be found at the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh Castle. But unlike the London locations where they are on duty all year round, they only stand guard when Her Majesty is actually in residence. Number 3 coming to work drunk and disorderly. Drinking was a huge part of the culture among the Queen's Guards, but such was the need to have complete relief for armed officers on duty at all times that it was stated that even those who turned up smelling strongly of booze were allowed to book out weapons and get on with the job. Page had mentioned that he and his colleagues were putting their fully loaded weapons to other uses, as well as carrying firearms while drunk and using them as props for gangster-style photo shoots. He's doing his job, don't be an idiot. He can't do nothing! Oh! He also mentioned that some officers threatened to turn their guns on themselves or others. Page had clearly stated that one officer stationed at a post on the palace perimeter threatened to shoot himself while on night duty. He was talked out of it and had his gun confiscated, but then managers redeployed him to a new role, handing out weapons to others. One officer was soon nicknamed Two Shots after accidentally discharging his weapons twice in the Queen's train. Others secretly carried their guns without any bullets because they didn't want to have to shoot an intruder, but occasionally, if they were seriously drunk, they might be advised to sleep it off in one of the palace rooms or given medical relief in the form of a pack of mints and a luzocade. An incident was also stated about when a senior official in the royal household was coming through the palace gates, and instead of lifting the barrier, a hungover officer accidentally pressed the underground ramp button, sending the woman's car into the air. Number 2. They gave each other lewd nicknames. Page and the rest of the new breed of younger royal protection officers who took over at Buckingham Palace in the late 90s gave each other a string of outrageous nicknames. An internal Scotland Yard summary of Page's confessions about their antics in the palace reveals that one fellow officer was jokingly known as Roy the Rapist. At the same time, another was called Doug the Slug because he was apparently overweight and lazy. Another guard who was mocked for taking in an unhealthy interest in the royal family was named Fagin. After the palace intruder who broke into the Queen's bedroom in 1982. Page himself was known as Gripper after the tough school nut from the TV show Grange Hill. Number 1. What happens when the Queen is away? Page had also revealed that he and his colleagues used to sneak into the Queen's throne room late at night brandishing their guns and would pose for gangster-style photographs on the seat of royalty, most especially when they came to work drunk, and sometimes maybe just for fun of things. The Queen's throne sits on a raised pink stage below a gold dome ceiling and a proscenium arch buttressed by a winged figure. Cross-examined at Page's fraud trial in 2009 about why he would risk the sack by daring to damage the royal perch, a fellow guard replied that perhaps it was to say you've done that, maybe to your grandchildren. According to him, they would sit on the throne and laugh. Page also swore that if one gets a chance to sit on the throne of England, they would never pass it up. And that's all for the 20 secrets the royal guards don't want you to know. Are there possibly other secrets we don't know about that you do? Then let us know about it in the comment section. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.